From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Our top story, a Barrow couple has been charged with second degree murder in the beating death of a Fairbanks man at the Extended Stay Hotel. 39-year-old Abraham Stein and his girlfriend, 31-year-old Dominique Vasquez, are in custody at Fairbanks Correctional Center, accused of killing Wesley Lord. An affidavit states Vasquez was in a hotel room with Lord and a few others. Now, when Vasquez was caught having sex with Lord, she claimed he raped her. Stein then allegedly beat Lord to death on the hotel floor. The group admitted to watching the 5-10 to 10 minute beating, further stating Vasquez held Lord's mouth so he could not be heard. Both are being held at Fairbanks Correctional Center with no bail. I apologize um, to the family. Huh? That's all I can think of my kids, you know, his kids. I apologize. That's it. Alaska is not expected to gain jobs in 2015 as the state faces downward pressure from low oil prices and tightened government budgets. That is according to the annual jobs forecast from the State Department of Labor. Growth slowed in 2013 as shrinking federal and local government cutbacks led to public sector losses. Government losses continued into 2014 and are expected to continue this year. Closer to home, the last few years have been rough for the Fairbanks North Star Borough, but that trend appears to be changing. We have are forecasting some growth in Fairbanks in 2015. It's just a small amount of growth, just 200 jobs in Fairbanks, just less than one percentage point. But there are some industries in Fairbanks that we are anticipating to grow, and we actually don't expect that it will see the same kind of losses that the rest of the state will be seeing. As we reported last night, the Alaska Department of Transportation and Public Facilities is considering whether or not to raise the speed limit on the Richardson Highway between Eielson Air Force Base and Fairbanks. Tonight, Jamie Schwartzwald gives us a more detailed look at the idea. Up until 1974, the speed limit on this section of the Richardson Highway was 70 miles per hour. The limit was dropped to 55 miles per hour due to the energy crisis that plagued the country in the mid-70s. Though speed limits on many highways around the state, including portions of the Richardson, have been raised to 65, this portion has remained at 55. Alaska DOT is looking to change that and is currently studying traffic patterns on the highway what the traffic volumes are on the road, what the speed is that the traffic is traveling anyways, and then also what kind of um, entrances and exits there are on to the road. Several improvements, including the construction of five overpass interchanges, have been made to the highway since the 1980s. And that definitely makes it a lot more conducive to have traffic moving at a faster speed. The North Pole City Council passed a resolution Monday night supporting the speed yes. limit increase. Councilman Thomas McGee, who is also a yes. student driver instructor, supported the resolution. 65 miles an hour is not a harmful speed for our highway. It's a four-lane divided highway. It's not speed that causes the accidents. It's distractions and failure to control. It yes. passed four to Even three. To Those who vote. did not support the speed limit increase cited the potential for motorists to avoid stopping in North Pole on their way to and from Fairbanks. Councilman Michael Welch expressed safety concerns for traffic entering the highway at 12 Mile Village, an area plagued with motor vehicle accidents late last summer because people are scrambling as fast as they are now. So I can't imagine how faster they're going to scramble uh, if we bump the speed limit up. Uh, it's going to be, you know, take your life in your hands type thing to get across the highway. DOT officials say the speed limit on any Alaska road is condition dependent and a potential limit increase on this section of the Richardson would not require motorists to drive at 65 at all times. Speed limits are set for ideal conditions. So you're thinking a clear day, dry pavement in the middle of summer. And so speed limits are set for the maximum speed that you should be going on that on that stretch of road with those ideal conditions. Jamie Schwartzwald, New Century 11. Mm -hmm. All right, interesting. All right, yeah. When we come back, Cirque du Soleil begins tonight. Our cameras will take you behind the scenes. Also, the kids at U Park Elementary School were treated to some Yupik customs and dance today. Those stories are next. Stay with us. And welcome back. Earlier this afternoon, we were able to get a look at an exciting show that opens tonight in Fairbanks. Take a look-see. 
Cirque du Soleil's Ryan has come to Fairbanks and tonight is the opening night. Now us at KTVF are taking you behind the scenes so you can see what it takes to put on such a massive show. Check it out. Okay, so we're taking you back behind the scenes of Cirque du Soleil's Dralian, the first time ever in Alaska, right? Yeah. And I'm here with a performer. Can you tell me your name? Yes, it's Maria Rubisson. I'm from Quebec City, Canada. We just got to see her in the air doing some flips. So tell me, what, what do you do? Uh, well, I think it's a lifetime uh, process. So I started at four years old doing dance. And then at 12 years old, I'm um, doing gymnastic. And then at 18, I started with Cirque du Soleil. After five years with this show, I was up to more challenge. So I was like, I built my own uh, aerial solo act and then I uh, proposed it for Dralian and then that's how I got here. Okay, so uh, you just showed me the girls girls' dream drawer. So can you show me again? Yeah, that's your favorite, favorite <laughs> drawer. Uh, like the artists do their own makeup and includes all the eyeshadows of different colors. You said each performer has their own um, order of things. Yeah, exactly. Each has a step-by-step. -step. Um, they learn to do their makeup back in the Montreal when they, as they learned to uh, the choreography, mm -hmm. uh, it's part of them becoming a character in the show. Speaking of performers, tell me how many performers are in this show? We have 100 people on the show, uh, 52 within, within what we have 52 performers that are from 19 different nationalities. Australian has come to an end and the show will retire at the end of Anchorage, uh, January 18th. So you're going out with a bang in Alaska. We are and very excited. It's nice. We, we had some snow. Everybody ex was excited to see the snow. We've done lots of uh, activities here in Fairbanks and we're looking forward to explore more of what Alaska has to offer. Great. Well, thanks so much, Julie. Thank you. So there is so much going on here at Dralian. Come on down, check it out. They'll be here till Sunday and then they're heading down to Anchorage. I'm Stephanie Woodard reporting. All right, when you're a second grader in elementary school, one of the farthest things from your mind is that you'll someday come back and talk to another second grade class about your achievements. But that was the scene today for Chanda Simon, this year's Miss World Eskimo Indian Olympics queen. The former forever a Falcon from University Park Elementary School felt it was important that kids there should receive a message about never giving up and forging ahead to reach their goals. So she, along with the Fairbanks Native Association, arranged for a cultural exchange of language and dance for the very receptive group of youngsters. Well, I wanted to show the kids that um, if there's something they want to do, they could go out and do it, such as going out for Miss Rio or even Miss Fairbanks Native Association. I hope they come out of here knowing that education is important and that also culture is important too. To be respectful of it and to be to know your culture. Well, it's time for our weekly segment, Fairbanks Flavor, and this time Lisa features her pasta with prosciutto and peas. Buonasera, welcome to Fairbanks Flavor. I'm Lisa Gambardella. Welcome to my kitchen at Gambardella's Pasta Bella downtown. Today, we're gonna to make a Northern Italian dish called pasta with prosciutto and peas. We're gonna start with a hot pan, add some oil, some fresh garlic, Make sure your pan's hot so you get a nice sizzle on that garlic. Let the aromas come out. Just toast it just enough. Then you can start adding your delicious flavors. This is a sweet and salty dish. So we're gonna put some caramelized onions in there. Our prosciutto ham is very salty, very delicious from Northern Italy. It's a great thing to keep on hand. Also some peas. Mmm, looks delicious. It smells even better. Mm. Now it's time to add some cream. You can also use half and half and let it reduce more. I love the flavor of heavy cream. So that's what we're using today. Mm. Let that reduce just a minute. Add some fresh nutmeg. And the pasta of your choice. And there it is. A delicious, quick meal, satisfying, gourmet treat you can make at home. Join us next week and look at all our recipes on WebCenter11.com. This has been Fairbanks Flavor with Lisa Gambardella. Buona sera, buon appetit. Brought to you by Gambardella's Pastabella. 
Again, it always just looks so I'm good. I'm never a big fan of peas, but in that dish, I'm willing to give peas a chance. I know. She does a very good job. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, up next in sports, a sudden coaching change at UAF. High school sports highlights and the Iron Dog made a huge announcement today. Joe Cook is coming your way after the break. <music> Welcome back Interior Sports fans, Joe Cook here on a Thursday evening with your local sports. And a special announcement today, a documentary about the Iron Dog Race will be featured on the NBC Sports Network on March 31st. It's the first time the race will be shown to a national audience. It'll be produced by our sister station, KTUU. Also, Scott Davis will race this year. He'll try to be the first to win eight Iron Dog titles. We'll have more on this as the race, as the race approaches. There's been a swift change in UAF skiing and cross country program. Scott Jerome will no longer be a part of the program. This story coming from the Daily Newsmire today. Jerome has been placed on leave and according to UAF Athletic Director Dr. Gary Gray, Jerome's contract will not be renewed. It expires on June 30th. Both parties were mum on the reason why Jerome is out, citing confidential personnel matters. After 10 and a half seasons, Jerome was the longest tenured coach at UAF. In 2011, the women's cross country team made their first NCAA championship meet. He's coached 17 All-Americans in skiing, including national champion Marius Karthauer in 08 and Max Olix, who was a national runner up just last season. Current assistant coach Christina Turman will serve as UEF's interim head coach. Despite that new skiing competition continued at the U.S. National Cross Country Championships in Houghton, Michigan today. APU and West Valley product Becca Rohrabar finished fifth in the 20K Classic after taking silver in sprints on Tuesday. Nicole Baith led the Alaska women's team finishing 36. Reese Hahnemann was sixth for APU in the 30K Classic. Logan Hahnemann and Michael Fahrenbach finished 18th and 19th to pace UA the UAF men's team. West Valley's Max Donaldson placed eighth in the Junior 10K Classic. This evening, Lathrop tried to bounce back after a devastating loss last night in hockey. We'll talk about that in a bit. Lathrop hosting the Diamond Lynx at the Big Dipper for an early senior game. Lathrop honored their seven seniors tonight. Senior Ryan Evanall made some nice saves early on. He had 26 of them for Lathrop. But Tanner Rath, he outskates everyone and finds Cody Daring for the shorty with eight seconds left in the first period to give Diamond a 1-0 lead. The Lynx scored on a late power play in the second. This time, Wraith gets to tap in to go off the bar for the score. 2-0 Diamond going into the third. Diamond gets two more in the third period, and the Lynx shut out late up four to nothing, spoiling their senior night. Chris Gardeline made 20 saves to get the shutout for Diamond. And now Wednesday night was the Dog Bowl on ice. West Valley and Lathrop in the first Middle Alaska Conference matchup between the rivals this season. It was all West Valley in this one. They outshot Lathrop 40 to 12, and they blow out the Mutes 8 to 1. The pack is 4 and 5 overall and 1 0 in the MAC. Stasi Skorowski had a nice line, two goals and two helpers. Trent Wood also added two goals. Yanni Saramanolis was just spreading the love with four assists in the big win for West Valley. Then in the second period, we came out even uh, harder than the first, and then it just kind of just hit it, six goals. It was really nice. After that, I mean, everybody was just ready to keep going, and we just wanted a good win, get a little motivated for the game tomorrow against West. Beating Lathrop's always a good feeling. It's always a little motivating, knowing that we come out on top between the two of us. A little bit of bragging rights. I mean, I got a couple friends on that team, so it's pretty fun. But it's always good competition between the two schools for hockey. Now high school basketball highlights from Wednesday night at Lathrop High School. The Malamutes and Ketchikan Kings going at it on Joe T. Court. Lathrop hasn't played since December 13th. Sophomore guard Jaden Whiteside, he set the tone for Lathrop, hitting the three. He was telling the guys, you can't guard me, bro. He finished with 16 points, seven in that first period. But K High answered with an 8-1 run to gain a 2014 lead in the second quarter. But I got the burner, I got the burner. Cole Burner hit three big tray balls to get Lathrop back in it. And it was tied 27-27 at the half. Nice step back jumper there from Burner. It was just 39-37 game in favor of Lathrop going to the fourth. SK High had five players for at least seven points, led by Net Days 9. But the Malamutes run away from the Kings using a 16-5 run to start the fourth quarter. And Lathrop wins 65-53. Burner led Lathrop with 17 points. Curtis White Jr. added 11 in the win. But we didn't play any games all over this break, so getting kind of sick of practicing. But yeah, we came out kind of nervous, I think, and then we got it going eventually. Yeah. I think it was a talk at halftime. Milo told us, he said, be patient, do what you do, win this game. That's it. Uh, I think we were just able to push the ball and get into our offense quicker. Uh, we just took control with our guards and stuff and made plays. 
And in the girls game, Lathrop and Ketchikan would turn out to be the game of the night. Actually, Ketchikan was up 27 25 at halftime, led by Charlie Edwardson's game high 23 points. Lathrop would make their move in the second half as the Malamutes put together some balanced scoring. Four players got in double figures, led by guards Mackenzie Warner and Carly Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's 13 point outings, Tyra Doe and John Hadukovic both added 12 points apiece. Peace, K High would make the Mutes earn this one, but Latham will win in overtime 62 58 over Ketchikan to get the Wednesday night sweep at Jilty Court. And this score just coming in today, the Lathrop boys would fall to Bartlett in the Diamond Prep Alaska shootout in the opener 80 to 76. It's Lathrop's first loss of the season. But that's it for sports. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hey everyone, welcome back into the Fairbanks City News for a Thursday night. Mike Schultz with you once again talking about the weather and feeling a lot better because those warm temperatures we've been talking about, warmer temperatures as I say, are moving in today's high above zero. How about that? And we're looking at uh, teens, even maybe 20 degrees by Sunday. More about that later on. Today, or should I say, I should say last night we were supposed to have auroras. I didn't see any, but uh, in November, Jacob Buller was able to capture this November aurora. What a gorgeous shot that is. And we're supposed to have auroras later on. I'll tell you about that in just a little bit. And as always, if you have a photograph to share, by all means, send it to photos at ktvf11.com and we will definitely share it with the rest of the audience. Here's your numbers. Nine Nine degrees, that's our high for the day. The low last night, 19 below. There's your record high, 40 above in 1930 and 53 below in 1952. Sunrise and sunset, about four hours and 36 minutes, a gain of five minutes from yesterday. And speaking of auroras, our aurora watch is up to a strong level of four. So if these clouds clear out, maybe we'll see some good fireworks from Mother Nature. As far as our air quality alert, well, North Pole is in an unhealthy status. And Fairbanks is unhealthy for sensitive groups, and that's through actually 5 p.m. Friday, not 5 p.m. Thursday. Now, what's going on as far as the rest of the state is concerned? Well, we'll take a look at the satellite and radar and show you the flow is once again coming directly from the southeast. And that is expected to bring more clouds in, unfortunately, as far as rural viewing is concerned. But temperature wise, it helps to keep the temperatures warmer because it traps all the warm air in the lower levels. And we're looking forward to that to continue. Now, what's going on across the rest of the state? Well, over southeast Alaska, there's rain falling at Ketchikan with 43 degrees, just mainly cloudy skies at Juneau and 29. In the Anchorage Bowl, 28 degrees, and they have a freezing rain advisory out still. Kodiak Island looking at 43 degrees, some snow over the southwest portion of the state mixed with rain there. Up in the north slope, one degree below at Barrow and Fort Yukon, 13 below. A few days ago, they were 38 below. That's good to see, too. What's going on across the rest of the lower 48? Up and down the west coast, once again, very nice weather, kind of chilly in Seattle, 46 degrees there. It's warmed up a little bit at Denver, 47. Minneapolis, 16 degrees, a cool temperature stretch all the way down to the Gulf Coast states. 35 degrees in New Orleans, Atlanta 33, and uh, New Orleans looking at uh, some rain, very cold rain falling there. On the satellite and radar, you see once again the pivoting of this area of low pressure moving across the Great Lakes, helping to bring the lake effect uh, snow, and also over the uh, northwest part of the state looking at cloudy skies there. The uh, overall jet stream calling for very cold temperatures to remain to the north, at least north of uh, well, this jet stream down to the south, still enough cold air to bring an icy mix over Texas and rain over the deep south. Well, back to Alaska for tomorrow. Here's what it looks like. On the northern sections, mostly clear skies for Barrow and Fort Yukon, but mostly cloudy skies in the Nome area. Here in the interior, we'll be looking at, for the most part, partly cloudy skies for Fairbanks, occasional flurries for Healy, and a wind advisory in effect still for Delta Junction. Those winds should be dying down this evening. And over the uh, southeastern sections, light freezing drizzle for Juneau. Most of the cloudy skies in Ketchikan. Out to the southwest, it looks like a mix showers for Cold Bay. Windy for Kodiak and freezing rain and blowing snow in the Bethel region. While over the Anchorage Bowl, again looking at uh, freezing rain advisories. Be tapering off this evening, and Homer uh, also looking at uh, snow and, sh and freezing rain, and then more snow around the Valdez area. All right, here's our forecast. They're actually, we're looking at once again our kids' weather for tonight, and the kids' weather all this week has been from Pearl Creek Elementary School. Here's a young man with a weather question for me. Hello, my name is Zadik, and I'm from Mr. Sassman's fourth grade classroom at Pearl Creek Elementary School. And my question for the weatherman is, what is ice fog? 
And freezing fog or ice fog is caused by water droplets of just being suspended in the air and freezing because it's so cold and they just can't reach the ground. It all combines together with pollution and smoke, and that's what gets us that ice fog situation. Thanks from Mount McKinley Bank, and next week our guests will be the kids from Salcha Elementary School. Al, real quickly, road conditions, drifting snow, icy patches, and packed snow on the Dalton Elliott Highways and the Steeson and Richardson, slippery roads, ice patches, and black ice, and uh, the same expected the Parks Highway. Again, in the uh, forecast for tonight, as you can see, temperatures warming, zero degrees, and tomorrow's forecast looking at uh, 14 degrees, another day like today, scattered high clouds. And your five day outlook. Calling for cloudy to partly cloudy skies through the five-day period. Temperatures very comfortable over the last few days in the mid-teens. And overnight lows will also be rising once again to around 0 to 5 above. Fantastic, Mike. Yep. We will take that. Yeah. And we have run out of time. We'll see you back here at 11 from all of us here. Have a great night. Good night.